Hello and welcome to the Watch Kaki channel where we bring you all the good and honest watch reviews. In today's video, I'm going to revisit one of my earlier videos on the Tudor Black Bay red model. In that video, I'm going to put the link to that video somewhere here in the top right corner. In that video, I listed a few things I dislike about this Tudor Black Bay 41mm and one of the things I mentioned was the lack of adjustability on its bracelet. So this is a great bracelet. It's got a really nice uh, clasp with the ceramic ball bearings here as a locking mechanism. But one of the flaws that I mentioned was that this thing here, it doesn't have enough removable links. So now I've just zoomed in very dramatically to let you see what I'm talking about. So you can see here that there is a screw link here. So you can remove this screw but you wouldn't know what else to do because if you remove the screw, you need somewhere else, you know, to reattach the screw. But as it is, it looks like there is no other way you can remove one more link from the six o'clock area. So in my video, I actually went on to say that the great bracelet here is spoiled by the fact that there is not enough links to be removed. Turns out I was wrong. Upon watching the video, one of my viewers his username is Muscle Mania. He actually wrote into me twice. He wrote into me twice to suggest that there is indeed a method to remove one more link from the six o'clock area. And today I'm going to share with you how this method can be done. So before starting, I'm going to show you the tools that we need for doing this. Firstly, you're going to need a good spring bar tool. I've got this one here from Bergeon. I've had this for more than 10 years and it really works very very well. Uh, it's not cheap but I think you, know, you do get what you pay for. So this one is really top quality. This one here has a very slim or fine tip here and also has a fine fork end on the other side. You also need a really small jewelless screwdriver. That's for removing the links on the Tudor Black Bay. I have a spare spring bar tool here. I use this for uh, many purposes. Sometimes I use the cap to press down on the spring bar. And sometimes if I need a bigger fork or a second spring bar pin pusher. So I'll just use this one from the other end. I think I got this one from Nomad Watchworks. And finally, you need tape, lots and lots of tape. Uh, I use tape to tape up the parts that I want to protect. So for example, if I want to put my spring bar to, to the metal and all that, I normally tape up my watch to prevent any accidental scratches. And here's a big disclaimer. If you're not proficient with any of these tools, don't, don't do it. Bring it to a jeweler whom you trust, bring it to a jeweler or watchmaker whom you think can do the job well. All right, don't ruin your watch just because you want to save uh, 20 to $30. I don't think that's worth it. So now we are looking at a super zoomed in view of the watch that is lying on the uh, pot stand here. This is a cheapo cork pot stand from Ikea. I use this uh, to lay my watches and to do my strap adjustments all the time. They work really great. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up the side of the watch because when I lay down the watch, this part is in contact. I don't want any scratches when I'm you know, doing my stuff, I'm pulling or anything like that. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to remove the spring bar from the clasp here. That's to separate the two sides of the bracelet. And the way to do it is to press in the hole here, the adjustment hole, and then we will pop it out I've got this one removed and you will see that you know the bracelet you know sort of separated and now we're going to look at how we can remove this link here I know in my earlier part of this video I mentioned that hey there's only one screw to be removed I can't possibly remove my link through this clasp area here turns out to be I was totally wrong you can actually remove the link from the clasp 
or the fold over area here what you need is a good slim strap bar tool sorry spring bar tool and you're going to depress this part here so that you can release the flip lock so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it is done you press in here remember you need to use a good tool for this one I've got a really nice Bergeon spring bar tool all right so don't resort to using things like paper clip and all that because these things may not work so well and it may actually mar the flip lock here so it's not a good idea so now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the flip lock here by depressing the spring bar So you can see that it is held using a spring bar, this flip lock here. And you can see that I can remove the entire clasp from the rest of the bracelet by removing the spring bar that goes inside. Ta-da! Alright, so that is how the last link here on the 6 o'clock side can be removed. Okay, so you remove the screw here and the remainder of the male part here, the male end link here goes back into the clasp. And this part here is secured by a spring bar. It is not secured by a screw. How amazing. <laughs> so now I'm going to remove this link here by unscrewing the last link. It'll be really slow and steady because you don't want to ruin the watch so there's no reason to rush things here because you know if you rush and then you slip and that's it you get a really big scar across your watch or across the bracelet I don't think that's a very good idea okay so I've removed the last link here all right the link that previously was thought to be unremovable is finally off and now we are going to reattach the bracelet back to the clasp area by using the spring bar that I just removed. So this end here, the male end goes back to the clasp area. Okay, and then the spring bar goes through. And you reattach the flip lock using uh, any spring bar tool or anything that can press down the spring bar. So over here I'm using the cap for the spring bar tool and I think it works really well to push in all these uh, spring bars. Let me just get the base lined up nicely first. And there you have it, we have successfully reattached the uh, bracelet back to the clasp. So next step, we are going to reattach this end here all right, to the buckle or clasp area. So this one here again is secured with another spring bar here, I think it's a fatter spring bar. And once again, I'm going to use the cap to press on the spring bar. Okay, so everything snaps nicely in place. And looks like we got the job done. Alright, let me just remove the tape here and wipe the watch clean. And I'm going to show you how much the fit has improved on my Tudor Black Bay. So here's a reshot of the watch after the adjustment of the bracelet. So it fits so much better now, I'm able to get a better fit and a better adjustment on the bracelet, I'm finally able to remove one more link here from the six o'clock area, as opposed to keep reducing the number of links here and it just makes the clasp go further and further away from the center of my wrist. So I don't think that's a good idea. And I'm so glad that the viewer, Muscle Mania, I really gotta thank you for showing me this tip and here I am sharing this tip with many other To The Black Bay owners uh, if you have a smaller wrist like me, we're talking about wrist size of under 7 inch, uh, 
you know 17 centimeters 18 centimeters or less i think this tip may come in very helpful if you need to remove one more link from the six o'clock area it can be done all you need to do is you know use a spring bar tool and press in on the spring bar here that is securing the flip lock and then you know go ahead and reduce the length of the bracelet and having said that i must still you know reiterate my point on the black bay being a very unwearable watch i really feel that it is way too thick way too tall all right it's not very very thick i mean it is 15 millimeters 14.8 millimeters my omega speed master is about 14.5 i think but due to the slap side design the slap sided design here this watch here feels very very top heavy all right it sits too tall very top heavy and it's just pretty uncom uncomfortable to wear all right i don't think it's a very good choice for a daily watch all right so of course if you have a very big wrist you know if you're Dwayne johnson the rock if you're stallone if you're arnold schwarzenegger of course all right this watch is very small for you you can wear this every day and it looks like a ladies watch but you know for mere mortals like me with puny wrists matchstick wrists i think may not be a very good choice for a daily wear so there you have it that was my tip for you and this tip was shared with me uh, by one of my readers muscle mania that's his username thank you very much for sharing with us this tip here i'm sure many of you experts out there on twitter watches old timers i'm sure you would have known this tip already i'm just sharing this one with you know people who are not so aware that you can actually remove one more link here because when i spoke to the personnel from the authorized dealer i'm not going to name the authorized dealer here and the sales personnel actually told me there's nothing you can do yes there is one link here that looks like it can be removed but it cannot be removed so you know i went away feeling rather disappointed and i'm so happy that this trick here actually exists so if you find this tip to be helpful please like my video come back to my channel subscribe to my channel like my channel thank you very much i'm the watch Kaki, and i'm signing off now this is george he's my assistant we're gonna say goodbye bye bye